Hello to getting APIs to work. Today we want to talk about API security. And the reason that we want to talk about this is the recent Peloton case. And Peloton were one of those cases where a API that was intended for private consumption was externally exposed, which led to the problem that Peloton had. And this shows us that there's some confusion around the idea of private APIs, partner APIs, and public APIs, and about how to make APIs externally and internally available. So we want to dive into these topics very briefly, just showing that these are two different axes of what you might want to do with your APIs, and that understanding those two axes and managing them well will help you to create better API security. So let's jump right in. When we look at APIs, there are two different concerns around API consumers that are interesting. One of those is who is the intended consumer of an API. This can be private, meaning just inside the organization or partners or the public. The other thing is where is the API made available? Is it internally available or is it also externally available? And this really means from where in a network can I technically access those APIs. Let's briefly look at these two axes and it's really important to understand that these are not alternative models of API visibility or security. These are two different ways of looking at things and both are important. Let's look at private partner public. What that means is that some APIs are just intended for private consumption, meaning Consumption is by consumers that are inside the organization, but inside in that case doesn't really mean that it's physically inside. It's organizationally inside. This means that in many cases nowadays, private APIs very well have to be exposed externally. That was the Peloton case. In Peloton's case, the API was intended just for Peloton consumers. So the Peloton bikes and the Peloton apps. So all these consumers are Peloton products. So technically speaking, this is a private API because the API is just used for Peloton components communicating with each other. The next level up is partner APIs. Partner APIs are APIs that you design so that partners can communicate with you. So for example, they can submit orders, they can look at products, they can look at order status, whatever it is. So in that case, the API is, is intended to be used by users that are not part of your organization. And then we have another level, which are public APIs. And public APIs are intended for anybody who wants to have access. So in most cases, these might be self-service APIs where people can just register. They may get an API key so that they, there is some way of tracking how people are using the API. But by and large, the idea of public APIs is that they're really easy to sign up for, really easy to use. And in many cases, you might not really have a very good idea of who's actually using your APIs. But again, if we look at these categories, these are about who an API is designed for. And as I said, in many cases, private APIs still need to be exposed outside of an organization because there are components outside of the organizations that need access. So therefore, there's this other axis of how APIs are being managed, with it, which is the question of internal and external. In this case, it really is about how is the API exposed? From where is it even technically accessible? For internal APIs, this is just inside an organization, within its firewalls, within its demilitarized zone, whatever you call it, but the API is not available for somebody just on the open internet. For externally exposed APIs, that is what's the case. So the API is available on the internet, meaning that anybody can at least try to get access to it. And this is where things get a little tricky because there are many cases where you have private APIs that are 
externally exposed because your private use is not technically inside the organization, but it's apps accessing the APIs, it's equipment accessing the APIs. It is any kind of access that requires you to open your API up to consumers who are not on your internal network infrastructure. This may cause security problems. And as we've seen in Peloton's case, this is what happened. And in many cases, I think the problem there is really that the security model of APIs still is sometimes not managed very well. And one thing that we really recommend now, because it kind of always puts you on the safe side, is to say, a good way to think about security is to implement security with a zero trust model in mind. Meaning that you don't trust the network, so you don't trust that, well, there will be no bad guys on the network that the API is exposed to. And you also don't trust the user, meaning that you're not assuming that whoever gets access to the API will actually do the right thing with it. This is a security stance that is, takes a little bit more work, but it really is what I think for modern API management makes a lot of sense. This means you always have to secure your APIs, but that's a good practice really to do, which means you probably need the right tooling, you need API management in place, you need, you need some kind of platform, some kind of infrastructure that allows you to do that. But that really is something that if you're using API, you should be doing anyway. So I think this is not really something that is so exotic. But always thinking like this makes a lot of sense. Right? One last data point. What we see, for example, is that more and more security breaches are from within organizations. It's not the case so much anymore that if you have a secured network that you can assume that all the bad guys will be outside, right? In many cases, intruders somehow get access to your network. It's really hard to completely and entirely secure a network. And if that happens, then if you have a zero trust model around your APIs, you're still sure that your APIs are protected because you're not trusting the network. And that's a good thing to do nowadays. So in summary, when you think of APIs, try to think about the private, partner, public aspect in, as one dimension, and then try to think of the internal and external aspect of a different dimension. Both of these are important. And ideally, treat all your APIs with a zero trust model so that you're not making too many assumptions that if they're not true anymore, suddenly you have an API security problem and you end up in the press and you don't want that to happen. So stay safe and keep getting APIs to work and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.